everybody, today I'm gonna take this raw file, I'm gonna turn it into a picture like this at the end and show you every single step from start to finish. So let's get started here by bringing down the highlights just so the cars aren't quite that bright. And this is a night picture so I kinda wanna keep it a little bit dark but I really like to bring up the shadows and get all of that detail. Then bringing up the whites can really help with dynamic, you can see the extreme example here at 100 but I definitely do not want to do it that much because even though it doesn't look too bad in the skyscrapers, in the road and in the cars, it really looks terrible. So I'm gonna just add maybe 20 and then go over the local adjustments in a bit. Now blacks, I'm actually even gonna bring them up and bring down the contrast, bring up the overall exposure and what we have is a very flat picture right now. So what I'm gonna do is go down into the tonal curve and just bring down the shadows so just the very dark parts are getting darker while not affecting any of the rest. Additionally, I think I'm gonna bring the point curve to medium contrast, also add some very tiny structure contrast, and I'm gonna play around with the rest of these sliders here, which adjust the tonal curve, and I think just bring up the highlights a little bit. So clarity is another very important thing, and generally speaking, I like plus clarity for these kinds of pictures because as you can see, they really bring out the whole texture by a lot and it looks great, but you also have to be careful about the areas where it may not look that great. So again, I'm just gonna add a little bit and then go actually right away and grab an adjustment brush and just add some plus clarity and also some plus whites, bring up the feather, bring up the size and just brush over some of these areas in the sky actually the entire sky as well as some of these uh, leaves from the tree. Here's the before and after of that, just one adjustment brush and as you can see it really works to add some local adjustments from time to time. Then overall vibrance, I think it's relatively vibrant already so let's just leave them at zero. I really don't like these reddish tones from the cars so I'm gonna grab the hue sliders, a little pinpointer, just drag it over the reds and bring it up and down until I have a bit more of a more natural looking color, I guess, which is here um, more into the orange and yellow tones. Also gonna adjust the saturation of the sky, just a little bit too much blue, and that looks really good. So before I do anything else, I wanna go down here into the remove chromatography in the lens corrections, as well as enable profile corrections, and while I'm at it, I'm gonna bring down the vignetting to zero. It really just made the corners a little bit too bright for some reason. And this already does most of the things. What I can also do is go down into the transform and just play around with the different presets because especially in architecture and cityscape pictures, sometimes this can help, but not really here. I prefer it off. So let's add just a little bit of vignetting over the corners additionally to the lens vignetting and again, really just not much, maybe minus six. And with that, let's go back up to the last global adjustments that I'm gonna adjust, which is gonna be the split toning. So split toning, you have highlights, shadows, and you can click on this little color palette right next to it, and then just add colors in either the highlights or the shadow parts. So this is great if you just wanna adjust a certain area, for example here, I think I'm gonna add even more orange tones for the highlights because it really works. It emphasizes all of these lights from the houses, from the cars, from the sky train. And then I'm even gonna go into the shadows and actually use that to go into the blues. And that way I can really add complexity in such a unique way that I couldn't really get otherwise at all. So there are so many different possibilities. You can also go into the blue highlights. You can go into the warm shadows, whatever you want. Just play around with it and do what you like best at the end. I might as well even add a little bit more warmth right here and then also go further into the blue saturation, I think. Yeah, I really like this look. So you can see even just this very quick adjustment from before to after, it does have a significant impact, especially if we look at the close details. So with that being said, I'm done with the global adjustment, so now I'm gonna go into the local adjustment, and the first thing that I wanna add is a graduated filter. So I'm just gonna drag that one over the bottom, just reset everything real quick, and make it a bit darker, but still bring up the shadows, because I don't wanna, you know, crush the shadows as much as just make it a little bit less bright. Maybe I'm even gonna work with the minus highlights here, and then I wanna add another graduated filter over the sky, 
this time kind of at an angle, so it's not equally affecting all of the sky. Instead, just kind of like this, as you can see with the mask. And I'm gonna bring up the whites even more, while I think I'm gonna leave the clarity at zero, but just bring up the whites even more. And now you can see there's a real difference from the lighting in the sky. There's real dynamic, which is of course what we want here. But before I'm done with the entire picture, I wanna add some more dodge and burning. And dodge and burning is making individual parts darker or brighter. You can use the adjustment brush for that. You can also use the rail filter. I prefer the rail filter because it just adds much more flexibility. But for the plus exposure, I'm gonna go into the plus exposure, as well as plus shadows, actually, because this is still kind of a darkish night picture, and then might as well add some warmth as well as a tiny bit of contrast. So then I'm just gonna go over some areas that I think could use some more plus exposure, right-click, duplicate the filter, drag it over another part, and you can also stack them on top of each other, which makes it a lot easier and much faster to work with than the adjustment brush. And again, right click duplicate. Here I'm especially gonna wanna make sure that filter adjusts uh, um, the part of the building right here. Right click duplicate, add some more plus exposure there. I think the trees are a little bit dark. So you can see it's a very fast adjustment and it can have a huge impact depending on how far you wanna go, of course but I really like to add at least a little bit of dodge and burning. And speaking of that, I'm also gonna go into the minus exposure with some other filters along with, uh, I think even plus shadows a little bit, so it's really not crushing any of the shadows, but making the stuff darker. And then I'm gonna minus exposure here and kind of make it more towards the corners. And just so there's also some differentiation within the exposure on this building for example you can see the left side if lightroom loads is a lot brighter than the right side so it's great to have that differentiation it adds interest it makes a picture interesting and complex and all of that so um just gonna add and right click and duplicate a few more filters and maybe even here yeah maybe even here towards the right of the road while bringing down the exposure, bringing the color temperature more towards the blues. And you really have to kind of adjust according to the area that you're working with. But you can see now the right side is a little bit darker than the left, also add some differentiation from the left side of the cars to the right side. I mean, there's so much you could do. And I think actually I'm gonna go back into the global adjustments and just bring up the vibrance by a touch. And with that, I think I'm done. So I know this was a very quick video and there would be a lot of noise reduction or color noise reduction, which I would recommend you to bring quite far to the right in any case, by the way. But I just wanted to make this rather quick and not so in depth. So this before, to the left, to the right is after. I think it's a pretty good difference. And again, I think it took maybe not even 10 minutes and Imagine what you could do if you would really spend time and zoom in and fine-tune everything. Anyways, thank you very much for watching, excuse my voice, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys.